Welcome back. In this video, I will discuss principal component analysis in machine learning with the help of simple solved example. Principal component analysis is used for dimensionality reduction in machine learning. Whenever we have been given a higher dimensional data and if you want to convert a higher dimensional data into a low dimensional data, in such case we use principal component analysis. To understand principal component analysis, we will take one simple example. In this case, we have been given a data set with the two features and we want to reduce the data set from two dimensional to one dimension in this case. The data set contains four examples over here and X1 and X2 are the two features over here. Given this particular data set, uh, in principal component analysis, we need to apply multiple number of steps. The first step is to calculate the mean of this particular two features over here. So x1 is the first feature and x2 is the second feature. So first we need to calculate the mean of x1 and then mean of x2 over here. So the mean of x1 is represented as x1 bar, which is equivalent to the addition of all these particular four uh, values divided by four. That is nothing but eight in this particular case. Similarly, the mean of uh, x2 is equivalent to x2 bar. Again, addition of all these particular feature values divided by four, which is equivalent to 8.5 in this case. Now, once you calculate the mean, now we need to calculate uh, something called as uh, covariance uh, matrix. The covariance matrix uh, looks something like this. S is equivalent to covariance of uh, x1, x, x1, covariance of x1, x2, covariance of x2, x1, covariance of x2, x2 over here. Now, the next question comes in front of us is how to calculate the covariance of x1, x1 over here. To calculate covariance of x1, x1, we use this particular formula, which is equivalent to 1 divided by n minus 1. n is the number of examples given to us. So in this case, we have been given four examples. So the value of n is equivalent to 4 here. Summation of k is equivalent to 1 to n here. And then uh, x1k minus x1 bar. x1k is nothing but uh, x11, x12, x13, x14 over here. That is 4, 8, 13, 7 in this case multiplied by the second one is again x1 so x1k minus x1 bar over here x1 bar we have already calculated and uh, because both the cases we have x1 x1 here so it will become x1k here also x1k so that's the reason it will be nothing but the square of this particular bracket here now we will put the values x1k is uh, 4 uh, again this x1k is also 4 Second time it will become 8, third time it will be 13 and fourth time it will be 7 over here. X1 bar is nothing but 8 in this particular case. So every time it will be 8, 8 over here. And once you solve this particular equation, you will get 14 as the covariance of X1, X1 over here. Now coming back to the covariance of X1, X2. So covariance of X1, X2 is equal to 1 divided by n minus 1 again. K is equal to 1 to n. That is n is equal to 4 here. X1, K minus X1 bar. Now it is x2k minus x2 bar here because the second one is x2 over here. So that's the reason it is x2k minus x2 bar over here. Again, x1k uh, is nothing but in the first case it is x11, x12, x13, x14. That is nothing but 4, 8, 13 and 7 minus this value that is 8 over here. So that is what I have written. This is the first time, second time, third time and fourth time over here. The second one that is x2k. x2k is nothing but x21, 22, 23, 24. That is nothing but 11, 4, 5 and 14 minus 8.5 in all the cases. So 11 minus 8.5, 4 minus 8.5, 5 minus 8.5 and 14 minus 8.5. Once you solve it, you will get minus 11 in this case. So once you calculate the covariance of x1, x2, that is nothing but the covariance of x2, x1 also that will come and sit over here. So that's the reason I have written covariance of x2, x1 is also minus 11 in this case. Similarly, we need to calculate the covariance of x2, x2. Covariance of x2, x2 is equal to 1 divided by n minus 1. Summation of k is equal to 1 uh, to n here. Again, this will be x2k minus x2 bar, x2k minus x2 bar here. 2k is nothing but what? 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 4. And x2 bar is 8.5 in all the cases. So once you solve this equation, again, you will get 23 as the covariance over here. Now we need to put all these particular four values to get this particular covariance matrix. So the covariance matrix looks something like this 14 minus 11 minus 11 23 over here. So this is the second step. We need to calculate the covariance matrix. This is how the covariance matrix looks like. 
Now in the third step, we need to calculate the eigenvalues of this particular coherence matrix. To calculate the eigenvalues of this co uh, coherence matrix, we use this equation that is 0 is equal to determinant of coherence matrix minus lambda i. i is the identity matrix in this case. So uh, S is uh, already known to us minus lambda i. i is uh, identity matrix that's the reason it will be something like this one 1 0 0 1 over here. So if you multiply by lambda it will become uh, lambda 0 0 lambda over here. Now if you subtract it from uh, S it will look something like this 14 minus lambda this will be uh, 11 minus 0 over here so it will become uh, minus 11 only and the second time it will be again here minus 0 over here it will be minus 11 only 23 minus lambda because we have 23 here minus lambda over here so it looks something like this and we know how to calculate the determinant of any matrix the determinant is uh, in this case uh, 14 minus lambda multiplied by 23 minus lambda this one minus minus 11 into minus 11 so, so this particular term and if you solve this particular equation, you will get lambda square minus 37 lambda plus 201, which is equal to 0 here. Now, it's a quadratic equation. You can use your calculator to come up with the lambda values over here. That is nothing but the roots of this particular quadratic equation. Once you calculate the roots of this particular quadratic equation, you will get the first root as 30.3849. Second one is 6.6151. So you can say that this one is the lambda 1 and second one is lambda 2 over here. Now in the fourth step, we need to calculate something called as eigenvectors over here. To calculate eigenvector, uh, we will name the eigenvector as uh, u is equal to u1, u2. We use this particular equation that is s minus lambda i. s is a coherence matrix. i is the identity matrix. u is the eigenvector over here, which is equal to 0. So we know all this particular thing. If you put all those particular things, it will look something like this. And then this will be, uh, this row is multiplied to this particular column. It looks like uh, 14 minus lambda into u1 minus 11 into u2. So that is the first line here. Again, this row is multiplied to this particular column. So minus 11 into u1 plus 23 minus lambda into u2 over here. So you will get th these two equations, which is equivalent to 0, 0 in this particular case. Now what we need to do is we need to solve this particular equation so that you will get u1 and u2 value here. Once you get the u1 and u2 value, that is nothing but your eigenvector over here. Now, uh, we will take either the first equation or second equation to get the value of u1 and u2. In this particular case, I have considered the first equation here. So now, if you look at this particular equation, it is nothing but 14 minus lambda u1 is equal to 11 u2. That is because if you take this side, no, it will become plus over here. Now, uh, you can say something like this. 14 minus lambda multiplied by u1 is equal to 11 u2 over here. Now what I will do, I will take 11 this side and 14 minus lambda this side over here. So it will become u1 minus uh, u1 divided by 11 which is equal to u2 divided by 14 minus lambda over here. So we will set it to uh, t here for both the values. So it will look something like this u1 divided by 11 which is equal to u2 divided by 14 minus lambda which is equal to t here. Again if you solve this particular thing uh, u1 is equal to 11t and u2 is equal to 14 minus lambda multiplied by t over here. We assume that the value of t is equal to 1. So u1 will become 11 and u2 will become 14 minus lambda over here. So your u1 will become or you can say that this u will become you can say that 11 uh, and the second one is 11 minus lambda over here. This is the eigenvector for the given what is that called as a coherence matrix here. Now the next thing is whenever we want to calculate the principal components, we have to consider the largest uh, eigenvalue here. We have two eigenvalues lambda 1 and lambda 2 between these two. This is the largest one. So we need to consider this and then we need to calculate the principal components over here. If you want one more uh, principal component, we need to consider the next eigenvalue and so on. So in this case, we want only one uh, principal component. So that's the reason I will consider lambda 1 over here. Uh, u will become 11, 14 minus lambda 1 in this particular case. So this is how actually the eigenvector will look like over here. Now uh, what we need to do over here is uh, we are not much interested in this uh, uh, eigenvector. We are interested in unit eigenvector. So that is the reason what we do here is we will first calculate the length of this particular u1. The length of u1 is equal to square root of 
11 square plus 14 minus lambda 1 bracket square over here which is equivalent to 19.7348 because lambda 1 is known to us you need to put it over here and then you need to solve here so the length of unit eigenvector is equivalent to 19.7348 over here so the final uh, eigen value or the eigen vector will look something like this for the first one for lambda 1 you can say e1 is equivalent to this 11 divided by for the length of u1 and the second one is 14 minus lambda 1 divided by this particular uh, the length of that unit eigenvector over here so put all those particular values e1 will become 0.5574 as the first value minus 0.8303 as the second value over here similarly if you want one more uh, eigenvector you need to put this particular lambda 2 over here that's the first thing and then you need to calculate the unit length and then you need to calculate u e2 here so e2 in this particular case is 0 0.8303 and second one is 0 0.5574 over here so this is e1 and this is e2 we are not much interested in e2 so that's the reason i have not shown the calculation here but it's very easy so we have calculated the eigenvector that is e1 as well as e2 in this particular case now what we need to do is we need to calculate the principal components that is the fifth step over here how to calculate principal components this is the equation we need to use we have already calculated the eigenvector we need to take the transpose of that one multiplied by x1k minus x1 bar x2k minus x2 bar over here so in the first case x11 x21 x11 is 4 over here x21 is equal to 11 over here so that value i need to put so for example 1 we will get the principal component in the second case i need to put 8 for x12 and 4 for x22 over here and then we will get the principal component for second example and the same thing will be repeated for two more examples over here i will show one calculation here in this particular case e1 transpose x1k minus x1 bar x2k minus x2 bar is equal to this one is already known to us i have written the transpose of that particular e1 here and uh, x in the first case k will be 1 over here x11 minus x1 bar x21 minus x2 bar over here so this is known to us that is 4 this is known to us that is 11 x1 bar is known to us that is 8 x2 bar is known to us that is 8.5 you put all those particular values you will get the first principal component is with respect to the example one is minus 4.30535 over here now the same thing has to be repeated for example 2 in example 2 only change will take place over here this x11 will replace with x12 and x21 will be replaced with x21 that is nothing but this will be 8 over here and this will be 4 in this particular case similarly in the second next case this will become 13 and this will become 5 in the last case this will become 7 and this will become 14 in that particular case so once you calculate the principal components for all the examples the principal components for the first eigenvector looks something like this these are the four principal components with respect to four examples over here now what we did here is uh, we have been given two features x1 and x2 we have reduced this particular features into one feature that is first principal component here similarly if you want one more feature you can calculate the second principal component and so on now we will try to understand the geometrical meaning of this uh, principal components so this is how actually we have already drawn this particular uh, two features so these particular dots will indicate the data points and this will indicate something called as the mean of this particular data set over here now what i need to do over here is i need to draw this particular eigen uh, vectors over here so that can be done something like this so first i need to draw a horizontal line from this particular mean and then vertical line from this particular mean here and this one we will assume it as 0 0 now and the first eigen vector value is 0.5574 so this is a positive value minus 0.8303 so somewhere here we will get that particular thing so what we need to do here is from this particular origin toward this one we need to draw one line here so this will become your e1 similarly uh, e2 e2 contains what 0.8303 so this is 00, 0 0.8303 right side the y value is 0.5574 so upward direction somewhere here you will get it so if you draw this particular principal component it will look something like this so it is going in this particular direction passing through origin and this particular eigenvector the same thing for this particular e1 also so this is e2 
and this is E1 over here. So this looks something like this. This is E1 and this is E2 over here. Now what we need to do is we need to write all these particular uh, data points and then we need to project it on uh, the eigenvector. In this case, I am interested in only the first principal component. So I will draw those part of things over here and then I will project it over here. This is projected on this one. This is projected over here. And this particular data set is data point is projected here and this particular data point is projected over here. So this is how actually we can calculate the principal components uh, based on the requirement. We need to calculate the first principal component, second principal component and so on. In this particular case, we have been given two features. We want to reduce this particular two features into one feature. So that's the reason we have calculated the first principal component over here. So in this video, I have discussed what is principal component analysis. I have discussed in detail uh, what are the different steps are there and how to apply th these particular steps on the given uh, numerical so that we will get the uh, principal components over here. I hope the concept is clear. If you like the video, do like and share with your friends. Press the subscribe button for more videos. Press the bell icon for regular updates. Thank you for watching.